What's up, YouTube? It's Duke back here from SportsGamers.com. And if you need help on defense in Madden 22, you're definitely going to want to watch this video because I'm about to break down the best coverage defense in the game to stop both the run and the pass. Now, guys, we all know this year coverage is so bad in general. Uh, zone coverage like cover two and cover three is just broken. Man coverage doesn't work that well either. There's really no safe coverage, standard coverage, I should say, in Madden 22. However, there are certain little tricks you can do that are going to be very effective. And one thing I've talked about this year is match coverage. Now, in this video, I want to get into a detailed look of cover four quarters. I want to go over some of the rules of this coverage. A lot of people don't understand how this coverage works, and they think it's kind of broken. But really, if you understand the rules, it can be super effective. Now, this coverage, cover four quarters, is in a lot of different formations. One people like a lot is that 3 through 5 wide. Uh, doesn't really matter what formation you run it from. You just want to find the cover four quarters. In this video, I'm running the Baltimore Ravens playbook on defense. We could look at it from the nickel 245. We could look at it from the nickel 3 through 5 wide. It doesn't really matter. But let's just go ahead and take a look at cover four quarters from 245. Now, I will say that in 3 through 5 wide, it's not called quarters. It's just called cover four show two. So be aware of that, but I'll show you guys it's, it essentially works the same. So I've gone over this coverage a lot against Bunch because Bunch is pretty common, but people always ask me, how does it work against other formations? Well, the rules are different kind of depending upon the formation. Um, you know, obviously you have your Bunch formations, you have your tight formations, you have your trips formations where it's like a three, three by one, three receivers on one side, maybe one on the other. Uh, then you have your two by two formations, which are pretty common uh, as far as, you know, spread type formations. So there's a lot of different rules. And we're going to start looking at this two by two with the spread Y slot. And what do I mean by two by two? Well, essentially, two by two is very, is very, is very simple. What it means is we have two receivers on each side of the field, two on the left, two on the right, as you guys can see here. Um, now... If it was a three by one, it would be a more of like a trips formation where you had three receivers on one side and one on the other. other. So that's kind of what we mean when we're talking about uh, those numbers is how many, you know, are on each side of the field. Now I'm going to get into the rules of this coverage in a second for this. But before I do that, I want to remind you guys, I do free Madden 22 tips and gameplays and news on my YouTube channel on a daily basis for Madden 22. So if you like my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop me a like and comment on this video. If we can get to 250 likes on this video, I will make another video breaking down more of these coverage rules against other offensive sets for you guys to help you out a lot. Also, if you're looking to get better at Madden 22, make sure to check out sportsgamers.com. That's where I post all my premium Madden 22 tips and ebooks, offensive and defensive schemes for both current and next gen. So if you're looking to win more games in Madden 22, we got you covered no matter what system you play on. All right, so let's get into it here. So you guys can see we have a three receiver hook, or three rec hook, I should say, um, two quarter flats, one on each side, and then two deep zones on each side of the field, one by the corner, one by the safety. Now, these are outside quarter zones, and they have match principles. Now, first of all, this is very important to know your personnel because this is not your standard drop zone. These um, defenders, that they will be matching almost as if they're in man coverage. So... You need to have some speed and coverage in your secondary. You just don't want your standard safeties that can't cover because then they could get whooped if they're slow, matched up with a fast receiver. Um, but as far as how this coverage works, so basically, guys, by default, your outside corners are going to be matched onto the each outside receiver on the respective side of the field. Now, we could get into the different numberings of the receivers based upon the rules, but to simplify it, let's just keep things simple. So the outside corner on the left will match the outside receiver on the, the left if the outside receiver goes vertically downfield. Now, the, the safety on the left will match the left slot receiver again if the slot receiver goes to downfield vertically. And you could say the same thing for the, the right side of the field. The outside corner on the right will match the outside receiver on the right, and the safety will match the right slot receiver again, assuming they go downfield vertically the receivers now if they do go vertically downfield basically your quarter flats are going to kind of jam them and then kind of pass them off 
the slot receivers to the safeties, and then they'll kind of just sit in the flat. Now, if the you know slot receivers maybe just run an out route to horizontally, then the quarter flats are going to match them. Now, at the same time, if the slot receivers maybe ran a corner route and the outside receivers did not go vertically downfield, then also the outside corners would be would play the receivers in the slot running the corner route. And the safeties, they would almost have nothing to do but watch over the top. So you can kind of see how this plays out with different passing concepts, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, and the other thing is this three rec hook. This is going to be who you want a user. This should be your user, okay? Um, so you don't really have to worry about too much with him because you're going to user him yourself. Now, one thing I will say is as this user is to watch the running back because he's going to be obviously the third target on the right side of the field if he does run a route, you know what I mean? So we would be accounting for him. Also, just in general in this coverage, you want to look for routes over the middle of the field, and we'll get into that in a second here. Now, before I get into different passing concepts and how this plays it, I do want to stress that this is good against the run too because just cover four, these safeties, they react immediately to the run. So if someone wants to run the ball, you guys can see the safeties are, you know, they're, they're immediately coming up. Now, you can press coverage if you want to get them in the box quicker, but you guys, if you look at and even maybe just move them down a little bit, but if you look at the replay, you'll notice that your safeties are immediately, they're, they're reacting to the run. If you take a look at the replay, they're not dropping back as if it was a pass. Their first step is forward as if it is a run. Key on those two safeties. See, again, how they come down against the run and don't take any steps back. That's why I like this against the run because it's a little bit more aggressive run defense because of the safeties in those zones. Now, let's get into how this works against the pass. There's a lot of different passing concepts out there that people commonly use. One of the more common ones is something like a smash where you have corners and some sort of like hitch from spread. And this is a spread set. So as I kind of alluded to earlier, if you run something like this, what's going to be happening, and we're going to take a look here, is those outside corners, they're actually going to match up onto the um, the corner routes, and then the slot corner is going to go ahead and take the little hook route. And the reason for that is even though the outside corners typically are supposed to be matching on the outside receivers, respectively on each side, that's, again, only if they run a vertical route. And we're, when we're talking about a vertical route, it has to go downfield, I would say about 10-ish yards. Um, when it's only just a little quick route like this, this is not considered a vertical route. Therefore, that gives the responsibility to the quarter flats, and the outside corner is actually going to match up onto the corner route. And again, the safeties, they don't really have much to do, so they'll play deep, but almost like double-teaming the corner routes. You guys can see again here, each quarter flat is going to take away the little hook after kind of, I guess you could say, passes off the slot receiver corner routes downfield. Now, again, remember I said as the three wreck, like that's the user, but you got to watch out for the running back. Again, look, the running back on a delay route, no one else will be there but you, so you got to pay attention to that yourself. Now, another common uh, combo would just be something like four verticals. People love to run verticals from spread formations. It's very, very effective against a lot of coverages out there, especially cover three. Um, but once again, against this uh, coverage we got here, it's really nothing's going to pop open, as you guys can see. Um, there's nothing there. I'll go to do it one more time and take a look at the replay. But you guys are going to notice that Everything got matched perfectly. Again, all we're doing as the user is we're just looking at the um, the running back against a combo like that. Now, there will be times, obviously, where the running back's blocked, and we'll show that an example of that in a second here, where you're going to have to do more as a user. But if you just take a look at the replay here, you're going to notice that, again, see how the quarter flats, because there's you know really nothing for them vertically, they just kind of pass the slot receivers off to the safeties. And then the safeties are almost matched up on them in man coverage. So again, that's why I stress for this type of coverage, you need to have guys with speed and coverage ability all over your secondary, even at safety. Now, again, in a situation like this, remember, if the outside receivers go deep vertically, then the outside corners will match up onto them on each side respectively. And that's what you see what happens here. 
And just as I said before, we're watching the running back. So, standard four-man pass rush, and we're able to get some easy pressure here. As you see there, they just force the throw, and we're able to get an easy interception. This is why I believe this is the best coverage in the game right now overall, is because there's nothing that the offense can just easily pick apart. You know, we got solid coverage everywhere, and it's very, very, very easy to, uh, to use on defense, and it's hard for the offense to attack with a lot of concepts. Um, now, I did mention that this works pretty much the same from the 3 through 5 Y, just to show you guys what I mean. Let's just run the exact same thing I just did. A uh, little vert combo. And let's do it out of, uh, let's do it this time defensively out of the 3 through 5 Y. Again, with this one, we're going to look at the cover 4 show too. And this is typically thought of more of a defense you would run against Bunch. But, um, you know, you're going to see that it works the same way. You know, the rules are going to be the same. As you guys can see, again, nothing's open. Everything was covered the exact same way as was before. Now, all that said, there are definitely going to be times where people block the running back and there's different route combos going on. So someone might do something like this to where they have like a slant flat combo. Now, I will say that slants are one of the best ways to counter this type of coverage. Slants do a really nice job, especially if you have a slant-flat combo, because as you guys are going to see here, you know, they can definitely get open. Now, I didn't have enough time to throw that, but like if I didn't use that, that would have been open. So you can imagine if someone just does a play like quick slants, then that's definitely going to be a problem for our defense. So you guys can see here... Um, you know, I was able to kind of bait them to see which one I was going to cover. But when there's two slants, especially, like I said, two slant and flat combos, uh, the slants will not get matched like this. You guys can kind of see that confuses our coverage. So I have to worry about both of the slants and kind of just bait them between the two. So slants are a pretty good way to, to, to counter this coverage because obviously the quarter flats will defend the flat. But because the slants don't go downfield enough vertically um they don't get matched by the corners or the safeties so therefore you kind of gotta just watch that yourself which is what we did there but you know that is definitely a nice way to counter this style of defense i'll do it one more time now if someone was doing this there is a quick slant to us there's definitely a way that we could counter it which i'll show you it to you in a second here and that's simply what i did there was to use press coverage now when you press coverage against quick slants, you're going to see that your corners will end up matching the uh, the slants. Now, I know he's still got open because slants are just a, a route in general that beats, that's going to, you know, beat that type of coverage. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, matches close to man-to-man, -man, right? And slants are a very good man-beater. So they'll typically will get open. Now, the way you want to counter it is you want to press and then the blitzer over here, you want to put him in a hook, a vertical hook zone. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to pay more attention to the slant that's coming across the field from the left to the right because we know that we have a hook zone on the uh, left side of the screen, so now I can pay more attention to the guarding slant that's going to the right. And, I mean, granted, the one on the left, I'm not saying it still can't get open, but it's definitely going to be covered much better, as you guys can see here. Pretty much nothing was able to get open, and now it's just you know a matter of being able to stop broken plays and get a, a pass rush going on. Now... Obviously, guys, as you can see here, this is not a blitzing type of defense. We're either going to be rushing three or four. So if you're going to run this style of defense, you definitely need a good pass rush to sit in, you know, to sit in this coverage because we're not, you know, we're not setting up a blitz. Um, we're kind of just relying upon our pass rush to get pressure. Now, as good as this coverage is, if you know what you're doing, as I'm kind of showing you in this video, how to kind of like deal with the co most common passing concepts people use, it's really good coverage. But no matter how good the coverage is, if you let someone sit in the pocket for you know all day long, all uh, sit in the pocket forever, broken plays happen, which is why your pass rush is probably the second most important thing in this defense behind making sure you have speed and coverage in the secondary. Again, because these guys will be matching, and matching is essentially very close to man coverage, so that's why you need that there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and remember, if you did, make sure to smash that like button. If we can get to 250 likes on this video, I will drop another video going over how this coverage plays against some different types of formations. So far, I've broken it down against Bunch, and now 2x2 two two spread. So there's definitely still more to, to cover, and 250 likes, and we will continue to do so. Until next time, it's Duke, and I'm out.